What's going on you guys? I'm coming to you today with another Armada video using Ryan Kingston's new and improved fleet builder and I'm going to be giving you a double build today because I'm actually giving you two versions of a build, two different ways to run it uh, and, and it's not really the same build, they're kind of different builds but they're using kind of the same thing. So first I want to show you a build I've been running uh, called the Ion Conga list and uh, also stay tuned for the end of the video because I'm going to announce a winner of my most recent giveaway so stay tuned for that um so this is the ion conga build and one of the things that i like about it is it's a very very effective but it's also taking a big risk because it has no squadrons uh i figured with two raiders i've got a lot of potential squadron flak and gunnery teams um while it's not crucial for them it does give me a lot of um you know anti-squadron options so if i want to pop for example my disposable capacitors and throw blue dice on somebody at long range but it's my front arc and there are also squadrons there no problem gunnery teams is always going to take care of me for that um and usually you don't equip gunnery teams to deal with squadrons, but here is a great opportunity where it just might work. Uh, so the idea of this build is that either raider can be doing the one-two punch. And for the one-two punch is uh, they're, they're going to go, f hopefully they'll be shooting first, popping disposable capacitors, potentially if they're at long range, because raiders are great at long range. That's where they've got you know, two evades and a brace. They have a lot of damage cancellation. Uh, and, and at long range, they're gonna, and Vader's gonna be our commander here. Uh, so we're gonna be able to get those those blue crits. And if you don't roll a blue crit, you can Vader from, you want more blue crits just in case your opponent has an evade. Uh, so we're gonna basically be rolling those blue crits at long range, trying to drain the shields very, very heavily of, uh, of any big ship that's coming. And potentially multiple big ships, because we can deal with multiple big ships with this list. No problem there. Uh, well, s slight problem there, but not, not it, but it's definitely manageable. And I'm running three Architans, and the Architans are basically all have enhanced armament and intel officer. And the idea of these three Architans is that they're gonna also stay at long range. And by, by the time that they're shooting, Hopefully my target is damaged front shield, damaged side shields, basically can't redirect. And that's what the intel officer is just to really add the insult to injury. If they do decide to brace, I can make them lose it. Vader guarantees me at least moderately good results on all of these dice. And I usually I'm rolling, uh, you know, five or five or more damage with four dice out of an Architens. Potentially six or more I mean, if I've done a concentrate fire which I tend to do a lot, especially if you know your opponent's shields are probably gonna be down by that time. So that's kind of what this list does. It's very, very effective uh, at, at taking out ships at all ranges. And if they do get close enough to you, that black die really helps out as well. Uh, if the squadrons come in, the Arcadons actually aren't half bad with being able to roll black anti-squadron dice, but that's definitely a risk. The reason I wanted to do an alternate to this build is that I don't think everybody out there is running that many Architans, and it's not necessarily the most diverse build. You might even say it's a little boring because it's just running two of the same type of Raider 2 and three of the same type of Architans. So it's like you only have two different types of ships. Uh, so, so I wanted to make something that might be more accessible to different players that's still trying to use the same concepts of softening up the, art, the enemy with heavy ions and then coming in with the re-rollable red dice to follow that up. Uh, by, and for this one, I'm running Opening Salvo, Planetary Ion Cannon, and Solar Corona. So let me show you the other build that I came up with that's a different way to kind of use this mentality. Um, and we're going to go ahead and, and, and build a fresh one here. And... And this build is going to use one Architans. So let's start off with the Architans. So I'm going to start off with an Architans, and we are also going to add Enhanced Armament. I just love Enhanced Armament, especially for a single Architans, because if you're, you know, you, if you're not trying to fly them in a conga line, you can afford to potentially put this guy right up the middle and shoot out both sides. Next ship is going to be a Gladiator, and we're going to make this guy a Demolisher as well. So there we go, Gladiator. We're going to toss on Demolisher. And for our ordnance upgrade, uh, I don't think I really need assault protons. Assault concussions would work, but I think I'm going to go with external racks. Uh, getting those extra damage because I have Vader is going to be great. I'm not going to give him ordnance experts though because. I've got Vader, I don't really need Ordnance Experts, although, you, yes, they both can work together, but I'm trying to save points. 
uh, for squadrons. And that's kind of... Because uh, this build is going to have uh, at least a mild squadron defense. Now, I am going to do a Raider 2. And, and this is going to be kind of like the same one you saw in the other build. We're going to add a gunnery team. And we're going to add uh, disposable capacitors and heavy ion emplacements. It's almost like this is just, just a super, super raider right here. Especially with Vader. Especially uh, make, to make it a Vader raider, you just guarantee to get those damage. Now keep in mind, you got gunnery team and heavy ions. Before somebody calls it out, there is a little bit of not maximized compatibility here because if, you, if you're shooting at two different ships, well you're only going to be able to use heavy ions on one of them. And that's fine. I, I go all in. If I've done a concentrate fire, I take the one that's most important. I go after that one first, spend my concentrate fire, add the blue dye if I need to, uh, and, and, and invader it and just do everything I can to get the best result there. And then just take the second shot as just secondary, like, hey, we'll just, here's some extra blue dam blue dice, you know, or, or even go against squadrons if you need to. Um, so now we're going to go with something else. We're going to add a victory, and this is going to be our flagship. We're going to add a Vic-2. Vic-2s just keep getting better and better every wave. Um, I'm hoping in the next wave it doesn't have anything for victories because victories are just kind of insane right now with just how good they are. So first off, we're going to put Darth Vader on here on the Vic-2. Here we go. Let's scroll down and look at Darth Vader. And uh, for our officer, we're going to add Minister Tua, which is going to open up uh, the uh, ability to put on electronic countermeasures. We kind of need this with any ship that has only one brace, especially if it's going to be our flagship. Um, so now this ship can potentially, you know, take take some hits. Uh, we're going to toss on Gunnery Team, which is a must-have here. And then, of course, Disposable Capacitors again, which is a must-have for this type of thing. Now we get into the option. Well, we got one more. And we're going to put on Heavy Ion Emplacements, which is, in my opinion, a must-have. Because now we've got a Raider and a Victory uh, that can both potentially do Heavy Ions. So I'm really liking that. Um, of course, having two of these is going to require two profundities, or maybe you borrow a profundity from a friend. Um, but heavy ions here, and not borrow a profundity, but borrow a heavy ion, I guess. And then uh, for our turbo laser, I'm going to go ahead and add spinal armament, because we're going to get the most out of that on this ship right now, considering we've got gunnery teams, considering we've got Vader. Uh, we're just going to really have a nice, really nice front arc, and I like that. So that brings us to 358. For our ships. That's four ships. That's reasonable. They're four really good ships. The Architons is probably the worst ship in this build, and that's my favorite ship in the game. So it's just, you know, it's a it's really, really good. Actually, really at long range, the Architons rolling the same number of dice as the Victory. So um, it's a pretty good, pretty good situation. Uh, so now we're going to add some squadrons. Now, for our squadrons, we are only going to probably do four, um, but we can toss on maybe Bomber. We'll do a TIE Fighter. Let's, in case we go up against heavy lists, let's toss on Mauler Mythil. And we've got enough for... we got 10 more points. So we can either do another regular TIE Fighter, or maybe a TIE Bomber. Let's make it two Bombers, a TIE Fighter, and Mauler Mythil. In this way, that Vic can potentially be doing some squadron commands and ordering these guys around. If, if I find myself in the situation where I just need... Um, you know, to distract enemy squadrons, I can potentially send some bombers. I can send like maybe the whole force, you know, around to flank. Or if you know, if I need to just slow people down, I can send in Mauler. Mauler can do a pretty decent job of slowing things down. So that's the uh, those are the squadrons. Again, it's not a heavy, it's not a really strong squadron defense. But between uh, between the Raider and the Architons, being able to throw down some fire. And also, you know, four squadrons and Mauler can potentially shut down, or, you know, hurt, hurt a big threat. Um, you know, I think it's at least it's well-rounded enough to deal with squadrons a little bit better than the other, the other one was. So let's look at our um, objectives. First off, we've got Station Assault I'm going to choose for the Reds. Now, the reason for this is Advanced Gunnery is not going to help me as much, even though I'm tempted to pick it. Uh, because, granted, I, you know, I could put it on the... I can't put it really on the Vic because I've got gunnery teams. And the same thing on the Raider. I don't think I'd want it on the Demolisher because you can only do one of your attacks after you move. Uh, and, and so that really just kind of leaves the Architons. And I just can't see putting advanced gunnery on an Architons. Uh, granted, yeah, I'd have four four red dice out the side. And that's the same as you know, a, you know know an Imperial Star Destroyer's front arc. But at the same time, 
I feel like the other person is going to get a better benefit out of it than I am. And so that, like I said, you up against an MC80 or something like that, you know, you're going to you probably have a hard day. Um, blockade run definitely isn't going to work. You know, a lot of these are just not going to not going to work. Opening salvo is not terrible, but only four four ships kind of makes me think this one is likely to benefit my opponent more so than me. But opening salvo is a, definitely a possibility, especially in wave seven now, where you're likely to see less ships. Um, I think that one could work. But the reason I'm going with Station Assault is that it's going to let me, uh, especially with the victory, going to let me kind of be able to predict where they're going to try and go. And I like being able to predict, predict where my opponent is going to uh, try to direct their force. So this way I can just point that victory in that general direction and, uh, you know, and not have to worry about it not being in the game. So that's, and that's one of the biggest risks with a victory is if people just, you know, flank you or go around you or ignore you, then you might, you might, might not be able to ever catch up to them. And so this does at least mitigate that. Um, next up, I will go with Planetary Ion Cannon for yellow. I had this in the other build as well, but a big part of this is that um, it gives me the option to attack any section. And especially if I'm trying to drain shields before all the rest of my ships can shoot, Planetary Ion Cannon can help with that. It can also help me, um, you know, hit, hit a ship on the on the on turn one before you know before things have gone. Now people can counter that, but now I'm forcing you to spend your first you know command or two doing engineer tokens. Uh, and also, if I find myself in a position where I've drained you know certain shields but not the right side, or you know if you've if you've pulled your shields from from the back and then reinforced to the front, well now I can potentially hit you in the back with the planetary ion cannon, and that gives a lot of flexibility there. Um, still a little bit of a risk there because I don't have strategic in this build, but if I go up against somebody who does, I can just be more careful on where I place those. And then for nav, solar corona, definitely, uh, definitely a good overall blue option. People don't generally like to pick solar corona, and uh, you know, and so I'm kind of leaning on that. And that is the build, guys. So um, let me pull it up in a uh, printable format uh there it goes and i also want to go ahead and announce our winner for uh the latest giveaway and that is going to be hope and despair congratulations you just won a 20 dollars cool stuff gift card so make sure you contact me on the back end of my channel and i'll get your contact information that way uh, i want to thank everybody so much for all the support we've been doing a lot of uh a lot more content lately, spreading out a lot more, doing some more board games. I got a lot more board game reviews coming. Um, I'm trying to get more bat reps, but things have been crazy lately, and I just haven't even been able to play um, Armada as much or X Wing as much as I normally would be able to do. But I do plan to get back to that as soon as possible. If you like this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. I appreciate all the support, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for alerts and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys again so much for watching and have a great day.